All right, welcome everyone. So we start this webinar dedicated to uh, door processing uh, systems. All right, let me share my screen. Uh, there it is. Okay, can you see it, everyone? Christoph, it's okay. Yeah. All right. I see. I see that one of uh, some of our colleagues are connected, so I will just write them a message so they let us know if if there is any bug or something from the viewer side. So that's great. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> thank you everyone for for joining us today. Uh, it's good to to speak to you. Uh, I know you can't speak directly to us, but uh, as Christoph said, you can uh, you can ask any questions or just conversing if you want to in uh, questions and replies. Uh, so there's a section for that in uh, in Zoom directly. Uh, so we try to to reply at the end of the webinar of those uh, those questions, um, so that we don't interrupt the webinar. Um, each time is questions, but um, if uh, if I can uh, reply directly, I'll do it for sure. Okay. Uh, just to remind you the, um, the purpose of this webinar, uh, we we can see you um, some uh, some of you guys in uh, in trade shows, international trade shows, uh, like we have the the EBA in Munich in uh, in October. There was a French uh, show where we saw some of you in uh, January. Uh, but it's um, not that often, so it's good to to be able to to show you our machines uh, directly in uh, in the web and speak to uh, uh, more people directly. Um, it's also <clears throat> the um, the thing for us to show us our new machines, uh, new options, or uh, new things. Um, some of you, um, I guess it's uh, almost half of it, uh, your um, distributors. So maybe you're already distributing Mira uh, machineries, uh, but maybe not. And uh, it's uh, good for you to to be uh, up to date uh, on new things because you're in direct contact with customers and uh, they'll definitely ask you some uh, some advices. So that's good for you to, to have this kind of uh, experience. Also, uh, some of you are already selling our machines, uh, buying our machines, but um, only a few of them, uh, because maybe you only know Meron for molding or for, for dividing, I don't know. But um, today we want to show you that uh, we have a, a large scope of supply and uh, that's important for us that you, you are aware of this, okay? um you will have access to the replay as well uh we send it to everyone at the end of the webinar so uh, it's no problem we send you that um and as said christoph last but not least we we have other webinars uh that are in the plans so well, yeah i think there's one for uh, some industrial we wanted to do one on rail pan as well uh and i wanted to connect one on the uh, molders to show our how many models we have and uh, our scope of supply on that. So keep us keep um, keep be updated on uh, on social networks, Instagram. We post on Facebook and LinkedIn as well, uh, or just ask me by email, and I will be glad to to answer to you as soon as uh, as I can. Okay, so let's start then. All right, uh, I just wanted to introduce briefly. So um, Christoph and I are both in, uh, in a sales team in Meron. Uh, as said uh, at the beginning, Christoph is um, an area manager, he's uh, handling a specific area. So Christoph, I just- I'm, So I'm basically I'm in charge of a small small portion of France in the East because I live, I live in the East. I'm not based in, uh, in Rennes. Uh, and then I take care of uh, basically all Europe, um, all Europe except north of Europe, and not um, not uh, Belgium and Netherlands and Luxembourg because now um, it's our colleague Adrien who is here also present in the in the chat I see uh, who is uh, who is your uh, contact for for these countries, um, and uh, Mark and I have been in Meran since uh, 2017. And uh, for me, even uh, a few years, uh, a couple of years before already, also. So, yeah, that's six years already. Yeah. 
you you had airs at this time christoph no yeah yeah, yeah. And, sure. uh, all the all the business and all the things made me made me lose my hair so not not good <laughs> at this point okay uh and me for i'm um, also in the sales teams but i, I don't have a, a specific area i'm based in the offices in uh, in ren uh for those of you who know football maybe you know stad rene uh, and um we have the factory here and the offices and uh, and i'm based here i'm helping uh, our sales people that are on field um so so that you can you guys have a, a quicker reply sometimes uh because i'm not that often in uh, meetings with customers so i'm available more uh, i'm more available than uh, our uh, area managers um, so do not hesitate to write to me and uh, i will uh, i can reply to you and copy our uh, area manager for that okay so uh just to show you a brief uh brief scope of what we're going to do today. So we're going to present the company briefly. Um, we're going to see the different machines that we um, that we make, uh, our scope of supplies, who we supply, with which kind of machine, which customer's typology. And uh, after that, we'll, uh, we'll dive into the machines, uh, in artisan machines first. Uh, most of you know of them, but uh, we won't uh, enter into much details uh, on the different machines in this webinar uh, because we won't have time it would uh, take all day long so um, we will dedicate it uh, we will dedicate some more webinars on uh, on specification uh, uh, the differences main differences with um, competitors such kind of things and after the artisan machines we're gonna see the bread lines uh, for more some industrial supermarkets industrial uh, bakeries and after that, we're going to check the questions and replies on, on the different topics. OK. Well, good. So I will, I will start with the, with the company presentation. So as, as, may, uh, as some of you may know, um, Meron is a family-owned company uh, since, was, since 1954. Um, but we are just in the middle of a some big transition um, as the historic um, owner uh, Yannick Gérard sold the company to the Belen Group in 2022. So um, just briefly, the Belen Group is a, is a French group owning several uh, companies and um, specializing in middle-sized companies that are working well, which is our uh, uh, fortunately, our our situation because we had a, a really really good year uh, twenty two thanks to some of you also of course and um, <clears throat> and that, and this is why um, also we will have a few um, change in uh, in the organization that you uh, that you that you may know so we will see that later. Um, <clears throat> As Mark said, um, the machines are uh, made and assembled in our factory in Rennes, so that's in the west of France, approximately one and a half hour uh, from Paris by train. Um, some of you already came to visit us for different events or for, for customers. Um, so for customers, we have a brand new baking lab. Um, you can see a, a couple of pictures on the on the bottom. Uh, it was completely um, refurbished, re remade a few years ago, and it's really a great tool um, for you and for your customers um, and for you bakers who are watching today to come to our factory, send us your flour before or your ingredients or whatever. And um, and we will do the recipes together and test them on our equipment. It's really a really great tool. We have most of our uh, machines, small machine and bigger lines, always uh, available for testing with uh, with Xavier, our our baker. And so in looks, terms of it looks like they are well uh, welcome because some uh, came again. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> some of you already came a few. A few times already, and seems to seems to like it a lot. So that's that's really good. Um, in terms of people uh, team, we are quite a small company. Uh, we are approximately thirty people, um, including quite a large 
part of a research and development team uh, because we have five people out of 30. So that's quite a, a big ratio. Um, but so yeah, small, small teams and good communication and, and efficient. Um, we have many innovation and patents also thanks to this large uh, part of R&D people. Um, we just put a few example, MF2S, Alveoform, PPR. This you will see uh, later when we, when we present the machine, but it's really important for us to have a lot of innovation and patents because as we will explain later, also we are really specialists. We don't do a lot of things. We don't do ovens, we don't do codes. We just do dough processing and our uh, uh, catchphrase is dough processing expert. So we have to be really more specialized than others with uh, with some, some really innovative uh, features. Yes, and um, here is our a team. So not complete team, but uh, sales team. So um, <clears throat> you may know some of them already. Uh, uh, mostly Xavier, who is our baker and uh, who is doing so also installations. Uh, he's a lot in contact with uh, all kind of customers uh, from different parts of the world. Uh, you maybe knew Yannick, um, who owned the company before, but uh, who sell sold it uh, last year. So he's still in the company for a, a transition. Um, so he's now a sales di director. Uh, but uh, Thierry Close is our, our new uh, new CEO, so he's uh, uh, bringing new ideas. He's coming from a uh, meeting, uh, meeting company, so he knows a, a bit of bread and uh, a bit of flour, and uh, he was a baker he was, before. He was a baker, yeah, so mm. it makes a big difference also. So yeah, he has experience, and, uh, and it's good also to have uh, new ideas uh, in a company. It's, uh, it's moving. Um, so yeah, here it is. So, um, in terms of international presence, it's quite strong, and we can see it again this morning with uh, with the, the the participants and how wide of a of a list of countries all of you uh, are coming from. Um, so we do sixty percent of our um, turnover outside of France, and this has been for years and years. Uh, I think seven or eight years ago, it was already the same. Um, change it a little bit, but uh, that's mostly thanks to our wide network of uh, of partners. We have very strong partners in uh, in Australia, in Asia, in North America, basically basically everywhere. We have uh, trusting trusting partners, and in some areas, um, we are still looking to expand our presence. So we are really. A we're a small company, small French company, but with a, a really strong uh, export culture. Yes, and, and there's a there's a, a dot on uh, in Greenland. I can see as well. Yeah, we I, I think we have a machine in uh, in Greenland and uh, in in a few other uh, uh, very remote places. But that's not a, a problem for Xavier to go and. Uh, and do the installation he yeah he also he quite he quite likes it and and myself he's, as well so he's a traveling guy so that's that's really good mm -hmm. um that means also that we know how to process many type of breads um as i told you we have machines installed in in as well as in in south uh, south america and asia and uh, and uh, australia and basically all of you guys are doing very different types of bread, uh, which means we have to adapt and um, adapt to your process and adapt the machines and find solution for your for your specificity. So that's really a, a big, big, strong uh, point from uh, from Meron. Um, as we said already, we can install the machines all over the world. We are used to doing that. Um, I don't think there is a lot of places where we would not go so that's uh, mm. that's always uh, that's always good and um, yeah as I said we have 32 uh, different countries uh, attending today that's for this morning session and we will have uh, another session this this afternoon for all our friends in the North America South America where they are most probably still sleeping at this time so we'll have another session for them later. Mm. 
Yeah, and uh, as regards the installation, uh, we most of them are made uh, through our uh, distributors who are taking care of um, small machineries or medium-sized machineries. And for specific lines, we we move uh, to your place uh, to directly uh, install with the help of our distributors as well, um, so that we we can make sure that very specific machines are installed by someone who already knows and have installed it uh, lots of time. Um, regarding our key values, uh, when we design a machine, a new machine, there's a really three thing uh, that we take uh, we we keep in mind. The first, uh, Meron is very famous for that, is the res door respect. Uh, so we take care of the, we make sure that your door is not um, uh, destructed. Uh, we, we keep the honeycomb structure. Uh, we make sure to have a, a real, real respect uh, for that. So that's very important to us. The flexibility of the machine, um, because you have not, that much space uh, most of you uh, there's so many bakers in the, in the uh, here today so uh, we always pushing walls and uh, so we try to make sure uh, one machine can make many types of bread uh, thanks to accessories or just settings uh, but this is important for you not to have uh, 20 machines in your in your baking uh, in your baking center so um, that's uh, that's a key point for us. And last is the modularity of the machine. Um, sometimes when you buy a, a line, for example, uh, then you don't have the all the money to buy all the line in once. So what we can do is uh, just buy a, a module, for example, on the rail pan line, uh, which is in photo right here. Uh, you can just buy the division. Um, I got a customer uh, that that did that in Spain who just bought the, the divider uh, in the first place, and then uh, when the bake, bakery is keep uh, is keeping growing, uh, then he buys uh, the molder. Uh, so it just go with with the development with the, the growth of the bakery. Okay, so uh, I I started uh, talking a little bit about that. Um, our our uh, slogan is dough processing expert, which means that we really focus well on dough processing, which is division, resting, rounding, and molding. Really, we, we don't do anything else. We don't do baking. We don't do uh, cold rooms. We don't do all that. But it also means that for division, we will not have only one divider. Uh, for uh, for uh, molding, especially for molding, we will not have just one molder. Our uh, range, let's say, is uh, narrow but very deep. So we we have only a few different uh, type of machines. But in these different types of machine, we'll have a lot of different models, which will allow us to really adapt and find the perfect machine according to what you to what you need. Um, we will not place the same uh, molder, for example, if you want to do 800 pieces of baguettes every hour during six hours, or if you want to do um, 2,000 baguettes or uh, or any type of uh, other product for uh, for 20 hours a day. So we will really be able to to adapt to uh, to what you to what you need the most. And um, and yeah, this goes from then small artisan, for example, divider for the hydraulic divider, to much more almost industrial, um, small industrial type of solutions in some uh, in some automatic lines. But in this all these groups of products, we are pretty sure that we will be able to find a solution, a machine that will be able to produce what you need or what your what your customer uh, wants mm, yes sure and um i think we have like uh, eight different molders so that's why uh, sometimes we we annoy you with uh, with some questions on uh, on the products on the length on the weight uh, but that's some things important uh, to us because um yeah we will adapt the, the solution uh, depending on what you're saying we just we just don't have one solution for for all of you guys.
yeah, many of you already know the famous Meron questionnaire uh, that we that we send uh, the formula where we we ask you as many as many details as possible uh, about the line so that we don't lose time and then we have the possibility to share it with Xavier with the R and D uh, team and and everyone to design the perfect solution for your project. Yeah, Christophe is right. That's very important uh, to us. We we work as a team. Uh, for those of you who already worked with us, you, you know it. But uh, uh, we we always talk to each other uh, to to have uh, ideas on a, on a solution, and we can build how we can build a solution. Yeah, with Xavier, CEO as well, uh, R and D, everyone. So um, that's important to us. Yeah, to just have one of, guy of a small company. Flexibility. Um, the different machines, or Christopher already said it. Uh, so we we sell to artisan uh, bakeries. We also sell to some industrial and uh, hypermarkets. So here are some lines that we we're gonna present you today. And uh, but sometimes we also sell to industrial bakeries. Uh, it happens sometimes. Uh, last year, Christopher did a big project for an industrial. Um, Luxembourg and uh, yeah sometimes uh, we have the machine directly to, to meet uh, the industrial needs uh, sometimes some industrial prefer taking two lines uh, two big lines what we call a big line what is for them a, a small line but they prefer to have two lines instead of one um, there are advantages for that. Uh, you are, you got less uh, less parts. Uh, if you have a problem with one line, you can still produce with the other line, uh, so you don't have to stop all the production. So um, we're getting more and more in uh, in this um, in this part of the market. Uh, even if we are more focused in uh, artisan and some industrial, we sometimes can meet uh, industrial needs. So do not hesitate to ask us if you have such kind of thing. We'll reply directly. Either we can or we can't. But uh, we we won't uh, make you lose time. Uh, just let us know if you have a project, and uh, and we'll tell you tell you directly. Okay. So, start. um, so starting um, with uh, what we do the most, the the best seller in the in the company, hydraulic dividers. So here we are more focused for um, artisan uh, artisan bakery, supermarkets, um, smaller production. It happens that we sell them in in big factories, but usually it will be the machine on the side to do smaller production of uh, of some product. So. Hydraulic divider, we, we divide them in, in three categories. Simple uh, 20 division divider. So that's just division to keep uh, a process with a proofer and a, and a molder. Then pr a press shaper, uh, where you can use it also to press um, fat if you want to do uh, croissant or things like that. Um, <clears throat> and also you can use the... Um, the grid holder on the side then to use it as a divider former so shaper um, and then it's completely another process uh, you don't use a you don't use a proofer and you don't use a molder anymore you will use usually blocks of dough that's what we recommend you will uh, put your um, your block of dough in the machine divide it with the grid and from there you will go directly into the oven because your block of dough uh, will have uh, proofed already in a cold room for usually eight eight to ten hours, uh, maximum forty eight hours with uh, with uh, no loss of quality, and that's a completely other process. And then on the right, you will see the divider shaper, uh, which is basically best of both worlds because you will be able to have twenty division to have the first type of process, and then you will have also the grid holder on the side. And we have uh, probably now at least more than 110 uh, different type of grids from a very small, uh, very standard uh, two or four divisions. So you will have four big pieces to much more complicated 100 divisions or 80 division triangles. You will be have, the, the, the list is almost uh, endless and you will uh, most likely find something that uh, that suits your uh, your need um you can see on the on, on the bottom that this the advantages of these machines 
Um, it gives you efficiency, regularity, and comfort, especially um, on our machines. We really like to um, make machines that are, are easy as operate as possible in terms of uh, using the machine and in terms of uh, handling the machine, which means that we usually um, know that in some bakeries it will be uh, not the baker who will use the machine, but um, the the girl selling the bread on the front of the bakery um, during the day, she will be able to pass a few blocks of dough in, into the machine. And you don't need to be one meter ninety uh, with uh, two meter long arms to reach the to reach the handle. It's really really well made. Um, so yeah, I think we touch the most important. And on the bottom right, you will see um, that we have the patented Atupin system. Most of you probably already know. Um, so that's a patented system uh, from Meran. And basically how it works in the tank, you will have a plate that is not flat. It's more like a wave surface. And the, this plate will go in combination with a special baguette grid. So to divide 10 baguettes and this baguette grid will not cut straight like a knife, but it will be shaped as a V and it will pinch. It will pinch the dough against the top of the alveoles. And this will, at the end, create a really nice round baguette in opposite to other products that you could do in dividers, shapers that are usually much more flat. Exactly. And we got a question uh, asking if we can do tin, tin bread on, uh, on the dividers. Um, you, you can divide, divide uh tin bread dough uh on um with the with the knives that are in, in the tank uh it's um you can divide up to one kilo so it's okay to divide but uh if you want to shape it directly in the in the in the shape of the of the tin bread that's more complicated um that's not the machine made for that we we have also machines for for that but um mm -hmm. yeah I would, say it de I would say it depends. Um, we just have a very, I, I remember we have a, a specific uh, recipe of tin bread, uh, but then the it is made by dividing long pieces, almost baguette shaped pieces. And these baguette shaped pieces are then folded in half and placed into a tin bread mold. Um, so for this, yeah, you could use, you could use a, mm -hmm. It it would not be rolled, of course, because it's not a, it's not a molder. But you could achieve something a little bit specific. But then, of course, as Mark said, we have other solutions uh, more dedicated to to this type of bread. Didn't know that. That's why we we work as a team. Uh, <laughs> Christoph is on the field, so uh, he can see customers doing uh, things that we didn't uh, even thought about. That's good. All right. Uh, so this is divider section, and uh, we also have a, a new brand, new new machineries, uh, which are two ones. We got two new machines, Stradivario and DivSmart. Uh, so it's a new generation of machine um, because there's a, a touch screen on it. So yeah, you can see the drawing. <laughs> it's um, it's not the purpose that we want, but uh, we we want the the boss, the bakery owner, to be uh, to be as uh, relaxed as possible, uh, to make sure that uh, operators are just doing fine with the machine and not making any mistakes. So uh, this machine looks like a divider shaper, but uh, it's more in the between uh, of a divider shaper classic classical divider shaper and an uh, automatic one, like uh, like some of you knows uh, the Paneo Trad from Bangar, uh, such kind of things. The fact to have a digital screen uh, offers you lots of possibilities, uh, such as um, the Easymatic. So you can record the, the, re the recipe settings uh, directly on the, in the machine. Uh, so if you want to make sure that uh, if you have maybe, for example, different shops, we have customers with a, uh, we have customers with uh, 15 shops. So he, he wants to make sure that all his bread are, are the same in uh, each bakery. So with this machine, it's no problem uh, because the bakery manager uh, can set the, the recipe uh, settings and uh, operators cannot modify them. There's a, a password. 
so there's not a baker in uh, in Paris who will say, okay, I prefer wasn't there's more pressure on this bread. And uh, in Marseille, they will put less pressure. No, it's all bread in the same shops. Uh, all breads will be the same. So it's more, more regularity and they, they can't make any mistakes. And I just see that we have a question uh, asking if we can show the machine working. Um, so basically, in the past, we included videos in our uh, webinars, but it's always a bit tricky with uh, loading the video and the, the quality was usually quite poor. Uh, so we just decided to not include videos this time directly in the webinar. But at the end of, of the webinar, don't hesitate to go on our YouTube channel and you will see basically on the on the most recent uh, videos, uh, you will see extended videos of Xavier uh, using the Stradivario presenting the different possibilities of the of the machine. And if you don't find the video, just shoot us an email and we will send you the, the link directly. Yeah. And um, on the next on the future webinars uh, that will be more specific, we'll include the uh, videos. But uh, just for this one, which was much more general, uh, would have last uh, three hours with videos. So it wasn't possible this time. Sorry. But um, yeah, just to give you a brief idea of the machine uh, of its possibility. And after, yeah, as I said, Christoph, just put this smart uh, Meron or Stradivario this smart um, in, uh, in YouTube and you find them directly on our website as well. Um, so the dig digital screen uh, also offers the possibility to um, export uh, daily production. There's a cycle count on the machine. Uh, so um, because when an operator wants to make bread, it will call the recipe. For example, I want to make the tradition baguette. Uh, okay, the machine will know you have made uh, 10 baguettes directly and uh, will count it. So at the end of the day, you can have a... Um, either by a Wi-Fi or um, USB, you can uh, grab back this information to have a, uh, to centralize all, all those information. And uh, it also helps to, this count cycle, helps to manage the cleaning, uh, to make sure the operators do the cleaning because we know that 80% of the of the breakdowns on, the, on machines are due to lack of cleaning. So that's very important to us to, make cleaning as easy as possible uh, to operators and make sure that they don't forget it because um, they, it's sometimes not their machines and uh, sometimes they do not pay too much attention to that. So that's important. And that's the same for the maintenance of the machine. Um, machine is able to say every 50,000 cycle, uh, okay, just you need to put some oil now because uh, it's it's been a while that you didn't uh, re refill. Like for, kind of like for your car, like for your car. Exactly, yeah. And there's wheels on this one, so. <laughs> and um, on the, on the Stradivario machines, uh, there's uh, an additional uh, system that will um, divide directly the ten baguettes uh, with some knives that are in the lead of the machine. It's called Auto Trad. So you don't use um, the grid holder and the, the grids to, to make the 10 baguettes. We did that for some uh, some um, Auchan, Auchan supermarkets, hypermarkets in France that were asking uh, uh, big quantities of baguettes uh, each day. Uh, I don't remember, Christophe, which the quantities um, are making. Yeah, there, there is one um, in the east of France. They produce with the Stradivario usually at least um, 100 blocks of dough per day for baguettes. So that's... that's uh, that's 1,000 baguettes, uh, approximately 1,000 baguettes a day, a little bit more on the weekend with the with the Stradivario. And mm -hmm. they uh, they wanted to win time because it's it's a lot of operations, uh, opening the opening the tank, putting the blocks of dough, closing, uh, working with the with the grid holder. Even if we make it quite easy and and as easy as possible they wanted to make it even quicker so with the stradivario they can cut one step and do and do it even quicker mm, yeah with 50 percent less manipulation so that's a, it's a good thing some of our customers are a bit afraid of a digital screen on the, on the, on machines but uh now it's everywhere uh it's on proofers it's on ovens and uh and it's working well so there's no reason that uh, it doesn't arrive on the, on dividers and is proud to be the first uh, to have this and to offer such possibilities. 
Okay, so um, after divide after division, you have proofing. So we offer uh, also a wide range of um, of intermediate proofer um, from the very simple from uh, for artisan where it's completely manual. You will uh, usually divide with a hydraulic divider. Take your piece of dough, put it by hand in the proofer. When you when you um, completely uh, filled the first part, you will press a button. It will go to the next one, and then at the end by hand you take it out and you put it in your molder then we have the semi-automatic version also, also again you put it by hand into the proofer and at the end it will fall automatically on a band and uh, you can uh, have different types of configuration different types of molders but you will go directly from the proofer into the molder and then we have the completely automatic version where we will feed the proofer with a volumetric divider so you don't put it by hand anymore, you don't divide by hand anymore, and you will unload also directly into uh, into the into the molder. So these are basically the three types of um, of proofer that you have on the market. And for each type, again, we have different uh, solutions, a few a few differences. Um, but mm, all of them offer already um, so what we call the hygiene kit. So it's UV lamp. Um, with uh, ventilators and extractors. Sometimes it's an option, sometimes it's included. Uh, flower duster, uh, which will allow you to work with more hydrated doughs, um, and a control panel, depending also on the on the on the type of uh, of the machine. And uh, one thing very important, it's again the, um, a few specifics, and we have a material um, that we use for the for the pockets. You can see it. You can see it on the picture. We don't use felt anymore um, because for hygiene reasons, for durability in time, it's definitely not the best solution. I think many of you uh, spend time in, in bakeries or if you are a baker yourself and you have this experience, especially with humidity, it's really, really hard to maintain and to clean. So we made the choice to use Niltex, which is a, a special material, which makes the pocket much easier to, to dry. Um, you can see the the hand of uh, of uh, probably Xavier uh, through the Niltex, so you can see it's very breathable. It's it's not dense, so your dough can still breathe inside the inside the pocket, and um, so which makes it a really interesting material for uh, for mm. proof. Of. It's like a, a mosquito net. It's mosquito exactly. net. It's uh, yeah. exactly the same. Looks like the same. I just wanted to do a small bracket to to show the molders because sometimes customers um, uh, are having troubles to understand the difference between back in feed belt and uh, front in feed belt. On the middle uh, image, uh, it is front in feed belt, and on the right one, it's back in feed belt. So, so that you can better understand. Okay, uh, let's go with molders. So um, most of you already know the, the Tregor molder, which is quite famous in the in whole world um, for, for the molding. So it has three laminating rolls. One will pre-laminate pre and uh, the two rolls will laminate. So um, it's a, it has been a reference for, for decades for sure. The new version is, uh, the last version is uh, 2018. Uh, so we improved some uh, some few things. It's a very hard um, construction for us. So our, our purpose is not only to make uh, good breads, but also to make sure that the machine will last in uh, in time uh, so that you don't make such kind of investment uh, every year or every five years. So it's mainly made for um, artisan with uh, yeah limited space because it's smaller than a horizontal molding. And uh, the budget is also much less important. And apart from that, we got the armor. Uh, so horizontal, so it's much more different. It's uh, like if a baker was molding on a on a table. Uh, it's exactly the same principle, all right? There's a few things you can adjust, not only the lamination and um, and uh, the molding elongation, but uh, you can also adapt, for example, the first uh, elongation, you can adapt uh, whether if you want a um, stronger, uh, longer elongation or not. 
we got a specific system uh, for that. So if you want, if you put the lamination uh, at the maximum, for example, uh, this first uh, elongation will uh, adjust to make sure that uh, you don't uh, elongate too much and that the, there's no no problem for for the dough piece to go to the first elongation from the first elongation to the second elongation. So um, this machine is more uh, dedicated to person who really take care of the quality of the products. Many of them, many of you uh, guys uh, are, um, are bakers and uh, you, the, the reputation of your bakery is also based on the, on the quality of your products. So uh, this gives the best result because it's like by hand. And those kind of molders, the horizontal ones, uh, it was the first version of the Meron uh, molder. And um, it's this one. I, I took the photo uh, the other day, uh, last week. So that's the first molder that we made in 1954. So that's uh, nearly 70 years ago. Uh, and uh, we we are trying to, to make it work again. Uh, it won't be hard, I think. Uh, it's still sturdy construction, as said. So it was called the sprint machine. So no, sorry, you can't sell it. Uh, it's not a second-hand machine. We don't sell it, this one. For those machines, uh, for those molders, we have different accessories to have them to, to be, for them to be flexible. Uh, I said in the beginning that the purpose to make different kind of breads uh, with those machine with like just accessories. So you got the, the tin bread guide, for example will calibrate the, the dough pieces to make sure they enter and they fit into the lid to the tin and they, they can cut it in three or four parts you can see the knives at the end and uh, you got the photo of the different results we can get with uh, with this accessory you got the point up also that you just put into machine uh, in, a, in a few seconds and uh, withdraw it in a few seconds so it will give you a pointed ended uh, baguettes the short loaf guide, so it's basically the same as tin bread guide, but just uh, it doesn't have knives to cut on three uh, in three or four parts. So we just calibrate the, the dough you're making uh, to make sure they're not too long and uh, you don't have to touch it at the end. And uh, another one is easy turn. So we sometimes work with uh, pre elongation uh, systems. So if you want to make shortbread with uh, a pre-elongated dough piece, that's uh, much harder. So we have this system to uh, to have it turn 90 degrees to make sure uh, it's not that long. So and we, have, those... we, we have a question um, and I remember we, we discussed uh, and, and that's when we say we have people from all over the world. Uh, I remember you are in uh, you are in Nepal, if I'm if I'm right. Yeah, um, I remember. Asking, ask, yeah, asking uh, about the possibility for tin bread. Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, that's possible. You got a, a hydraulic divider and uh, and uh, a molder like this. Uh, I know you are making a lot of tin breads, you, uh, Basin. So <clears throat> that would be an option. That's more a manual option uh, for sure. But uh, you can still have a um, automatic divider, a proofer, and uh, and this kind of molded uh, behind. Definitely. Okay. Up, let's move on. Yeah. So, um, rotables for the for the rounders. Um, also, very big interest at the moment for this type of uh, of equipment because also it's very adapted uh, for pizza, uh, for pizza dough. Um, depending on the on the hydration, depending on the type of uh, of pizza dough that uh, that you are doing. It will also depend on what you do, uh, what you have before for division. Uh, we will see later when we when we talk about the reopen that uh, some types of uh, of pizza, for example, if we still talk about pizza, are only possible uh, to to produce when divided with a reopen and not a, a volumetric divider. Um, but this is very very versatile for all type of round products. So you can have on the on the side you see 
typical bread dough. So you, you, you can do round bread and that's something that uh, our client then can sell, for example, to, to restaurants, typically. Uh, restaurants, school, hotels, this, this kind of products. It's very good with uh, brioche dough without uh, any, any problem. Uh, dough with uh, rye, so something that we find more in North and, um, and Eastern Europe. Um, and Paniton, we have clients doing uh, only Paniton with, uh, with this line. Um, you can see a little bit the, the dough weight. Um, so uh, 75 grams to, to four kilograms. Um, that's really, really wide. Um, and basically, uh, I, I forgot the first line, the, the system of eccentric rounders is basically trying to reproduce the gesture of the hand molding of the baker. Again, that's like like on the armor uh, with the baguette molder. On the, on the rota ball, we want to, again, reproduce the manual gesture because we know it's the one that uh, respects the dough uh, the most. And so, uh, as we say, also it's modular and, uh, and evolutive, and it can be linked with a volumetric divider or, or reopen. And here we have also um, the, the roller dual, um, which combines uh, rounding with a small um, integrated molder at the end to do uh, shortbread. So all the type of bread that needs to be first rounded and then molded, you can do them um, in, in one step with, uh, with this machine. Yes. And then we'll move to, to the automatic bread lines. Um, so we've got different ones. You, you saw it at the beginning. Uh, so we'll go quick on on each to to have the time to to see to see them all to see the scope of supply of Meron. Uh, let's start with um, the one that can be uh, adapted to artisan bakeries, big artisan bakeries, uh, automatic groups. Uh, so we got many different types of groups uh, with uh, external emptying, uh, internal emptying, vertical molders, horizontal, uh, with open opera on dividers or sometimes pressurized opera with pre-rounding dough pieces, pre-elongated ones. Uh, there's really a lot, and uh, that's why that's important to, uh, for us to know what bread you want to make. That's the thing. Um, in Mera, we, we have two different uh, ways of working. Um, there's the pre-rounding channel uh, on the exit belt of the volumetric divider. So this, most of you knows it, um, it would just round the, the dough piece, pre-round the dough piece because it's not a final rounding. Uh, but this is because it's much easier to center uh, a ball into proof of pockets. But um, the, the loading system is uh, then more economic and so the proofer is more economic as well. So it's very good to make uh, tin bread, uh, loaves, such kind of things. But if you want to make a baguette, with ball, it's not it's not good. Actually, you you will tear tear it, or uh, that's not the way you you do it manually. So our purpose, our aim, is to reproduce uh, what you're gonna do manually. So that's why we got the MF to a system. So um, it's French meaning actually, but uh, it it means shaping without stress. Um, so it will give a, a pre shape to the dough piece. So it will put the um, glutinous network in the, in the right direction to, to elongate be, uh, better after in the molder. So you won't tear the dough and you can get uh, longer products as well. It will be also much more regular. And that's, uh, that system uh, allows us to, to have uh, cuts on, uh, on some lines. We will show you after the flexi line. So you will see the different cuts, what I'm talking about. So this system uh, to have pre-elongated dough pieces um, means that you, you need a special uh, loader in your proofer because they don't all accept uh, rounded uh, dough pieces. Most of our competitors sell dynamic proofers uh, when they use pre-rounding dough pieces. Um, so the dough piece, um, get some more strength because it moves from one pocket to another during the, the proofing cycle. Uh, here, the purpose is really for the, the dough to rest 
uh, and to stay in the same pocket all proofing along. Okay, so um, you can see a photo of the, the kind of proofer that we have. Okay, so then um, a machine that we also um, developed and start selling quite recently is the, the div block. So the div block is a machine dedicated to customers who work a lot with, um, with hydraulic dividers and they need to have big production of blocks of dough, as you can see on, on the left side. Um, before that, the solution was to have one operator in the mixer uh, going to search 3.5 kilograms or four kilograms of dough weigh it shape it it was really and at the end of the day his back was usually broken in half and after a week uh, you would probably lose him so uh, we also got a lot of requests from um, our clients in the hypermarket who are used to work with a lots of blocks of dough and they asked us to find a solution so basically we started with a base of volumetric divider um, that we adapted to be more precise and to be able to divide bigger pieces, which means that it will be able in two or three uh, cuts to provide you with the quantity of dough that you need for your for your block of dough. And you will have also a few additional things uh, like a cut counter for number of pieces and things like that. Um, and so we, you, you see on the side uh, that we say for uh, approximately 160 kilograms of dough will give you 45 blocks of 3.5 kilos and it will divide it in seven minutes. So that's completely, uh, you, you cannot compare with, uh, with how, many, how long it would take to, to do it by hand. And uh, the, the problems that, we, that would come with it, it would be, it would be too much. So we have different versions of this div block. We have two versions. Here you see uh, the div block mono, which can only be used um, for this uh, for this type of uh, of situation. And then we also have the div block dual, which is then integrated in this group that we call polypin. And we say polypin because it's polyvalent. The same the same group um, will give you the possibility to divide your blocks of dough for hydraulic divider with the div block. And then you will have the possibility to just by flipping um, flipping the belt over to feed a proofer. And then for all your other type of products, usually uh, white bread, you will be able to produce it with much more um, quantity and then, then the, the small breads that you will do with a hydraulic divider. And also you will have the possibility to do hydrated baguettes. Um, this is always very tricky uh, to do in, in automatic lines, to do uh, what we call in French tradition baguette. Uh, approximately hydration is usually, usually around 72, maximum 74%, always depending on, on the flour. Um, this is always tricky to do in a proofer because the dough is very sticky. And if you stay too long in a proofer, even with a Niltex pocket, it will stick and you will have problems at the end when the when the blocks of dough have finished their cycle and the, po the, the, the pockets will turn around, they will stay uh, stuck in the pocket. So we also have the possibility to just buy a switch to uh, fill, for example, one pocket out of two. So you don't fill all the pockets, you, do, you just fill half of the pockets or just to fill one row out of two. So this will mechanically divide, um, yeah, reduce the proofing time. And uh, but for tradition baguettes, it's not a problem because the process is not the same. You will have proofing before usually and and after, so you can stay six to eight minutes in the proofer. It's not a, it's not an issue. So with the same line, you will be able to do white bread, tradition bread, and blocks of dough. Yeah, and uh, also special breads like uh, and short loaves or such kind of things. We we have a question um, asking if uh, if it's an um, oil free divider. So it's not oil free. Uh, we we know such kind of machines, uh, and um, why we didn't put oil free machines. Our R and D made some trial trials uh, on uh, on such kind of systems, 
Um, my, my only comment on this would be that uh, we we understood why this is no oil free car uh, at the moment. Um, so I don't know about competitors once, but uh, we were not interested in the in that system after we tried it. Okay, let's talk about the craft line. So that's mainly the, the kind of line that you can use with uh, pre-rounded dough pieces. Uh, because you want to make short breads, you just pre-round the, the dough piece, put it in a volumetric device, uh, in a proofer, a dynamic one. So the dough piece will change of pockets each time. It will give them some strength and uh, you will have a, a really tight or dense uh, honeycomb structure. That's the purpose of this. Uh, you can also sometimes uh, have um, a rounder, a conical rounder. Uh, a conical will give more, in, more strength as well to the dough uh, because um, the dough is not uh, is always under pressure. Uh, while on the rotable eccentric uh, rounder is different. So we got lines uh, which can go up to uh, 1,800 pieces per hour. Uh, so that's maybe the kind of line. Uh, uh, you will need in uh, in Nepal. Um, we got bigger ones as well. Uh, depend on the, on the weights, uh, we can do specific. Um, it's no it's not a problem. So if you have a project in this, just let us know the, the, the parameters that you want, and uh, we'll be able to to reply directly. Um, so you can do can do different types of bread with that, and uh, we we keep on making machines with uh, stainless steel uh, because that's important for for the durability of the machine to for you to have it for years. And, and I just uh, see, I just see yeah. a question uh, before we forget it, uh, asking what type of oil, uh, and that's a question that we get asked uh, a lot. So I already had my, my answer prepared. Um, so mostly use um, paraffin oil, but uh, paraffin oil uh, adapted for food, uh, for food use. So it's a special, uh, special paraffin, paraffin oil, uh, or you can use what you what, what is called lubric lubrication uh, oil. Um, so this is, uh, this is what you use the most um you don't the, the most important is do, not to use olive oils and this kind of things because even if it, if it seems pure um you always have um imperfections in the in the oil and if you use this type of oil in your in your in your machine for lubrication it will make some some deposit uh, some particle deposit and at the end um it will it will end uh with uh, blocking the machine. So you, you need to use special oil made for lubrification, so. Mm. And we have another question uh, saying that uh, if we can use this automatic divider with a vacuum opener for 700 grams dough tin bread. So yeah, it's no problem. Uh, we, we can do that. Uh, we got quite a large uh, range of weight um and go straight to the molder um depend on the process uh depend on many parameters uh we don't see that much often um because <clears throat> the dough piece um uh, needs to have some strength generally uh so you can send us photos of your of your products and we can check that with a baker uh, but generally this is always a a time of rest because uh, volumetric dividing is stressing the, the, the dough uh, a bit, um, even if we have systems to limit that, like the pressurized opener. Um, but um, it will still stress the dough, so I, I think you will still need a, a rest in between. Okay, so the big one, uh, reopen line. So this is really what the most versatile solution that we that we have in our uh, in our product range and i think customers have understood that because uh, we get more and more uh projects more and more installations and um and yeah so basically the the reopan is a a line made to produce so rect rectangular dough pieces that's just for the divider so you will do ciabatta focaccia and then depending on you uh depending how you configure the line before 
you will be able to combine it with what we saw already, so the rotable and the, and the armor molder, and it will give you the possibility to do not all type of bread, but almost. So how it works, um, it's a no stress division, which means that the dough will fall by gravity and will be uh, very gently uh, made into a long band of dough. Um, so this makes it really adapted to high hydration and long fermentation, and it makes it also very adapted, as we as we talked before, with um, hydrated pizza dough. Um, this is why I said sometimes it's possible with some machines and not. Um, if you work with a volumetric divider, for example, and you want to produce hydrated pizza dough, let's say pinza romana, which is a very big trend at the moment, if you work with a volumetric divider, since it's a vacuum uh, getting a volume of dough, it will attract the humidity of the dough on the exterior of the dough. And which means that if you if you put this bowl of, this bowl of dough in a, in a rota bowl afterward, it will be much more sticky, much more humid because all the humidity has come to the outside of the dough. Where, whereas when you work with a reopan, since it's stress-free, you don't mess with the humidity inside the dough and you can work very hydrated dough even afterward in a proofer and in a molder and you will have much, much less um, a sticky, uh, a sticky dough. Um, so the thing is also that each way, uh, each way, um, each dough piece, sorry, is weighted at the end of the of the reopan with with two scales, with one uh, controlling the dough and one making a second control afterwards, which means that we have a really high weigh accuracy, one to two percent. Um, in reality, when you say, for example, you want to do a piece of three hundred and fifty grams you will be usually between 345 and 355. So it's really, really accurate. And if you, uh, if, if the machine uh, is a little bit higher, for example, you have uh, 360, it will give the information to the system to cut the next one a little bit shorter so that you are always really, really accurate in, in weight. So the machine is always using the two uh, the two datas from first cut and second, uh, first uh, control and second control to adjust. Um, in terms of capacity, you can see on the side now um, the different uh, models that we that we offer. So for uh, hopper capacity, we have 65, 85, and 180, uh, 145 liters. And in maximum production of kilograms of dough per hour, you see also from 470 to 865 for the big one. And then you see minimum weight and maximum weight. And when you are working on minimum weights, the machine will work with two uh, rows of dough. And then for the bigger ones, you have the possibility to work with uh, one row of dough. So this machine really, if you have it configured um, like on the picture here, just with a, a rounder and a molder and we also have the possibility to add to add a proofer in the in the in the line you will be able to do everything from yeah ciabatta small square breads uh panetton uh brioche baguettes white bread white baguette and tradition baguette um products that what we call in france uh, batar which is a mix so it will go first in a rounder, then in a molder. So really, really a lot of products. And uh, how you can see on the bottom, it's modular and evolutive. We have a lot of customer, and Mark talked about it already before, that will start, for example, with the divider and the molder. Uh, mm -hmm. because, because, because at first, for example, they, um, they only need to do, to do baguette type of product. And one year later, they decide to start a new product or they have the opportunity to get a new market supplying a new product, for example, a round piece of bread, it will be very easy to integrate the rounder into the existing line. So this is something really, really interesting and it splits the investments. You don't have to do the investment completely in one go. You can uh, split it in, uh, in, different, uh, in different parts. Yeah, this is really a, a trendy line. Uh, we got much interest for this line. So uh, if you have uh, customers or if you uh, are a baker uh, making uh, high quality uh, products and uh, lots of different products and want to automatize, 
you really need to interest get interested in this line um we yes so that's for sure um what i want to say as well um okay that's it yeah we we got different uh types of customer all, all across the world so uh just let us know it's still interesting for uh for us to have a reference customer so that you can visit a line uh, close to to your bakery um just uh, check this out uh, with us directly. Okay, up, next line. There is the flexi line. Um, <clears throat> so the flexi line is uh, a line dedicated to, to baguettes or um, quarter of baguettes, uh, half baguettes, such kind of things, such kind of dough, all right? You still have the list of, of the products, uh, some images on the, on the left. Um, so we got two different uh, photos here, but uh, there's much more in the flexi line range. We got uh, more models. Um, mainly the the molder is uh, is changing each time. Uh, we can go up to two thousand five hundred pieces per hour. So that's our maximum. Uh, that's what we can do. On the right photo, you can see uh, also some uh, some um, tray loaders and tray unloaders. So we also know how to make that. That's not in a price list, of course, uh, because it depends on, uh, on many parameters. But uh, if you have a project like that, uh, just let us know. We already did, did that in the past. We're doing it right now. So, um, so that's something possible. Um, all our FlexiLine use the MF2S system, so with pre elongation because we want to get long products. So. Uh, we don't use round dough pieces. So yeah, as I said, depending on volume, depending on uh, organization, there's many parameters. So with a, a quick talk with you, uh, we, we have all the information that we have, that we need to, to be able to present you the, the correct solution and uh, a correct quote. Uh, so yeah, different molders possible. Uh, and we have patented system on, on such kind of thing. Mainly the flexi lines, the basic ones are for some industrial bakeries, but um, the one like uh, the, uh, on the right, that is on the right, uh, industrial bakeries, uh, that's for industrial bakeries. So, so we have customers interested for that. Here you can see the, the system that we have to, to cut the baguette into uh, two, three, four, five parts uh, so that you can uh, increase a lot your uh, your production capacity making them five by five small breads uh, for um, restaurants uh, hotels hospitals such kind of customers so we we have a video online uh, that i could show you that those all those screens uh, of the video and we get a lot of regularity this is the order in such kind of uh, of process so when cutting the baguettes it's not that easy to get uh, regularity. And uh, the customers of our customers uh, are pays a lot of attention to that. So we don't want them to refuse a, a batch of, uh, of breads because uh, there was two or three parts that uh, were not regular. Okay, so uh, rolling line, so we'll go quickly because we are approaching the, the end. We don't, we don't want to keep you all guys too long. Uh, rolling line also very trendy at the at the moment because there is a lot of uh, trend and production of um, mostly burgers, burgers and uh, and hot dogs. And this machine is really, really adapted for, for this. So it's a, it's an automatic divider and rounder. Um, you can see on the on the left side, it's just the machine alone. Um, you can see uh, bends coming out of the machine. In terms of uh, production, we usually say uh, 1,500 pieces per hour and per per row. So here you see on the on the picture, it's two row. So it will be 3,000 uh, pieces per hour, and we can go up to eight row if I uh, if I'm correct. Um, advantage, so it's a rounding in two steps. So you have a first global molding and then a finishing uh, finishing rounding. Um, the also the weight accuracy. Uh, if some of you had the opportunity to to come and test the machine in Rennes, 
you you will be surprised but the by the accuracy it's almost to the to the gram so if you want if you want 50 grams if the machine is is uh, uh, regulated correctly you will have basically between between 50 51 and 49 <laughs> so if if everything goes well it's really really accurate um, the weight range is also quite wide. Uh, we, we are not going to show you all the different wide range. It's best if you have a project with this type of machine to uh, give us um, to give us the the, the type of uh, of dough that you need. Uh, we say from the on the top uh, from seven gram to three hundred and sixty, but that's not one machine that will be able to 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 do all that. The machines that have, have, have different uh, range, and usually. When it goes in the in the very small range, it will not be able to to go all to the top. So mm. it's it's better if you if you let us know what you need, and we will help you pick the most adapted one. Our um, then, our most sold is uh, thirty to uh, one hundred fifty grams. Yeah, and yeah. if you go to the smaller, we got <laughs> um, uh, seven grams to uh, eighty grams. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, like we say, this machine it's really ideal for big production of uh of burgers of sm small sandwich breads all the type of bread that you can then supply and sold to uh we say uh, hospitals schools uh we have customer working with the army um yeah so all type of uh, we have the, uh, we have a projects now at the moment for a uh, a client supplying lots of uh, concert big concert big festival and then it's a very big production of uh of burger bread uh, usually and then you can see on the other pictures that also it's very versatile you can combine the machine with the armor molder or you can combine it with a with a small uh, a proofer and with some deposits so you you really can combine the line and uh, build it to be adapted to what you to what you need mm. yes let's move to the aquapan line uh, so this line is more dedicated to uh, square breads so um, bread that are not molded into a molder we just um we just put a blocks blocks of dough uh, in the infeed belt and it will uh, laminate the dough to have a, a good um, good height uh, regular and uh, we have some uh, some disc to cut uh, the different lengths uh, a different uh, width that you want if you want to work in uh, five rows or six rows such kind of things and after you got a guillotine to to cut, uh, so most of you knows already uh, such kind of machines. Um, we don't sell um, so many in France because that's not the most trendy products. But in some countries, uh, that's much more trendy. Uh, mainly, maybe in your countries, uh, Christophe. Yes, south south of Europe, uh, Mediterranean country, where they still have big production of uh, of ciabatta and, and focaccia. So yeah, the advantage you can have big production of of square bread, but um, disadvantage compared to to real pan, for example, is that you don't have any weight control. So if your mm -hmm. customer has a very strict weight tolerance to respect, for example, because he is supplying hospitals or schools and they need to respect a few grams of difference, sometimes it's not the most adapted solution. You have to really make a choice between weight and size. Yeah, you can't divide with both uh, criteria. Yeah. So those machines are mainly made for uh, high hydration dose, um, like ciabatta focaccia, we said. Uh, so we can go up to uh, a lot. It depends always on the flour and everything. So if you have a doubt, just send us a, a quick video of your dough and we will let you know if it's, that's possible or not. But uh, most of the time, it's a long fermentation. Uh, we got different uh, models, as you can see, uh, Aquapan from uh, 1000 to 9000. That's just the name of the model, uh, but uh, it also represents a bit uh, the kilo of dough uh, it can uh, that can go through uh, in an hour. Uh, it's uh, very flexible as as well, um, so that's the same. It's a different module. So if you want to add another module, one moment, that's uh, something possible. If you want to launch a new product with uh, seeds, okay, just add a, a seeding module. Um, so we adapt to to your production and to to your growth. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the the system for uh, square products, but not molded product. 
and then uh, now approaching the end, uh, finishing with uh, something a bit even more specific is the scoring line. Uh, not a lot of manufacturer on the on the market for this type of machine. So basically, what this does, you can see on the picture on the bottom, it replaces uh, manual scoring with a with a cutter blade that you usually have to do before um, loading your product into the oven. So a lot of companies are still doing it by hand, but at some point they realize that if they want lots of regularity in their in their scoring or uh, if they don't want to have it because it's it's quite time consuming to have one guy doing it by hand um, you also have all the safety reasons for example if, they, if he goes too fast it happens that one cutting blade could go missing and then you you don't know where it is in your production and then it's a it's a big big issue uh for your for your bakery or for your client so what this does is make it make it automatic on the uh, left uh, side you have what we say um the most well manual version of the of the automatic solution where you take your tray by hand uh slip it into the machine it will be uh, scored in a couple of seconds and it will come back on the bottom and you take it by hand again and you put it back in your tray or in the middle. <coughs> Sorry, you have a much more automatic solution with automatic picking of the um, of the of the tray into the into the ladder and scoring and putting it back. So it's from the most easy on the on the left side to the much complicated much more complicated and complex uh, and automatic on the on the right side um and so we say up to 15 trays in one and a half minutes so that's for the uh, most uh, manual uh, manual version and it's, we say really easy to operate uh, again we don't have a video here but there is one on youtube and it's basically just Pick your ladder, put it in the put it in the in the machine, and take it back back a couple seconds later. Uh, so that's that's really easy. And I didn't say on the on the top, um, we have multiple scoring pat patterns available. You can do straight cuts, you can do side cuts. Uh, we we try to adapt the most possible uh, what you what you want. And again, for this machine, um, there is no list price. There is no something like that. Every machine is made based on your need uh, which means when you have a project with a scoring line we will again send you a formula another one uh, and you will have to to tell us okay i want five cuts with this degree of inclination is it possible or not and we will have a look at it because sometimes it's not possible uh, we will let you know and then we will give you uh, we will give you a, a, a price for this uh, for this machine and we have, as said, Christoph, more automatic system online and also the, the image on the right with a tray loader directly. So it just puts the tray and it will unload the tray, score it and reload it directly. So that's more for industrial bakeries. Yeah. Okay. All right. So... I think we've replied quite a lot of questions. Uh, Darlene, uh... We, said, we said we wouldn't do it, but we ended up we ended up uh, answering directly. I think yeah. it's it's it's, uh, it's it's good also. Yeah, we we are still had a question from Richter asking for uh, his process on uh, on a tin bread if um, if an, uh, an intermediate proofer is uh, is needed. Um, I, I would say that depends on uh, on you. Uh, I've been working here for six years and. Basically, I've seen all kind of different process, uh, some that I didn't thought possible. Uh, so that's uh, that's up to you. You need to to make some tests manually uh, to check if you can do that uh, and have good results uh, or results that meet your needs. And uh, if this okay, if this is okay manually, uh, that would be okay uh, with automatic solution. Uh, so. Yeah, you can send us uh, some some videos or photos. We can check that with our baker. Uh, what do you think about it? And uh, and it also depends sometimes on the, on your conditions. Uh, if there's a lot of humidity, if there's uh, um, air climatized uh, air conditioning, know. air conditioning. Sorry. <laughs> so many parameters, uh, really hundreds of the, of them. So. Uh, just send us more information and uh, we'd be glad to, to check this out for you, uh, uh, Richter, no problem. And yeah, I saw that some ask in the, in the section of question replies, but in the same time, I received an email. <laughs> it's 
so it's, uh, it's, it's no problem we'll answer it uh, as well um we're asking about the rounder of the um, the rope and, uh okay let's just get back up up and line here it is so the rounder okay so we're asking if it's the same rounder as the, the rotable uh it is actually it's a it's the same it's um it's a, a rotable uh that is that has been adapted to to fit to the line and there's a bypass uh, on it uh, which means you can uh, either choose to to round the products and uh, grab them back like this. You can uh, round the product and send them to the molder for short breads. You can uh, just uh, use the bypass to to let the pieces go underneath the, proof, the, the rounder and collect uh, water square breads like ciabattas. Um, so there's many possibilities uh, with this uh, bypass. Yeah, that's for sure. We also uh, have a question from uh, Agnieszka um, regarding the rotable minimum weight 50 grams. So officially, no. <laughs> officially, we prefer to limit and say uh, 75 grams will be will be the minimum because we know that it's it's the minimum required so that the machine can engage. Uh, correctly the, the piece of dough um, but I remember talking about it with Xavier uh, who had customer doing um, tests and the customer tested 50 grams um, we said okay test it uh, we are not sure how it will go and at the end the customer was, was quite happy uh, actually from 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 what I know uh, but officially, we, we, we prefer, because we have to put a limit somewhere, uh, we prefer to say 75 grams. And then for, for everything below, usually we will more uh, direct the customer to a, to a rolling line. But then it, then it depends. It can be, it can be tested. It, it depends on the dough again. For this customer, it was working with 50 grams. Um, for, uh, for other customers, sometimes it can be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, we thing is we we all have different um, quality standards so that's uh, always tricky we we have to choose our standard uh, Meron, but uh, yours one can can be different so that's why we we have the baking lab to make some tests and uh, and check if uh, if uh, this is fine to you um i can yeah, we have another question. Uh, how do we compare with uh, VP? I will I will answer this one because I I meet them the most on uh, on mm -hmm. on my region in Germany and everything. Yeah, um, I think we are both on the higher side of uh, of quality and price. We are not going to lie. We are definitely not not uh, not on the cheaper side. So we are, we are both on the on the more premium side. Um, I would say they have a lot of experience with um, division and rounding uh, of so division and, and rounding of bread because in 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 Germany, for example, they eat a lot of brötchen, uh, so they they have a lot of solution for that. Uh, but with the rolling line, we have similar results. Uh, the only thing that we don't have, uh, I remember having the case once, and I think they might have a solution at, at VP. Uh, we don't have a solution to do the the stamp on top of the of the brötchen because in Germany when when they hit the when they have these round small round breads they have a stamp in shape of a star uh, before cooking uh, before baking and that's typical of this type of bread I think they have a solution and and we don't um, but other than that they they are maybe a bit more specialized on this type of of dough and then we are more specialized on on our uh, type of dough so. It, it it's 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 difficult to compare like that it's similar on some points and and different on on others but we are both on the more uh, quality premium side of would mm. say we will take a um, um, last question uh, the the percentage hydration percentage uh, on the flexi line and the uh, and repel line on the flexi line um, there's a proofer so you can't uh, let the dough pieces rest uh, during too much time if uh, the dough piece is hydrated because uh, or fermented because it will stick in the proofer. So generally, we we don't go over um, uh, in France uh, 62, 63 percent, I would say. Um, but uh, it depends because in. Uh, in uh, America, for example, you got a stronger flour, uh, which will 
drink more uh, so you can go up maybe to 70 uh, 72 um, this depends that's why we have some videos of the dough uh, but yeah uh, flexiline is mainly made for a, a more strong dough real pan uh, indeed uh, is um, made for more hydrated because uh, there's not always a proofer uh, in the real pan line uh, because we divide without stress we don't always need a proofer so that's why we can go with more hydrated. Uh, like uh, uh, we've went to uh, eighty percent. We I saw lots of tests with customers, even foreign customers coming uh, to test the line and uh, check what uh, their maximum with their flour, and uh, so that they they have the uh, um, the answer. And we, we, we have a last question, which is a little bit in yeah. the same topic, um, which would be the, the best divider and rounder um, for dough with high oil and high humidity. Uh, as Mark said, <clears throat> so for very for extremely hydrated and uh, high oil, it still would be the aquapan, uh, but then it's, then you are limited to, to ciabatta type of product, but then you can go really high in, uh, in um, hydration because you don't have any, any molding system and you don't have any molding and you don't have any proofing. It's a lamination line, which makes it much easier to work this uh, high hydrated uh, and high oil dough for ciabatta. Um, then if you want something much more uh, versatile, then we got back to the question before it will be between flexiline and reopen and then it will be it will be definitely definitely reopen which we which will be more adapted to uh, uh oily and and humid dough we we made some testing recently with a customer uh trying some uh product for some from central europe uh with uh with quite a high oil content and it was going through really well uh, through the through the reopen so Thank you. All right. Uh, I think we we've talked enough. <laughs> Sorry, we went uh, a little bit over, but uh, we like talking to you guys. So, <laughs> if you have any questions, just email us. Uh, we'll be glad to to reply to you. Uh, follow or us. Come back, or come back this afternoon <laughs> for the second session. Mm, yeah, but second session it's just the same. So if you have yeah. attended this one, uh, <laughs> that will you be exactly you the same. Learn, you won't learn anything more yeah exactly so we we'll send the link for to for you to watch the replay if you want to or and um, just let us know if you have any projects uh, we we'll work as a team uh, to to bring you a solution uh, if you have uh, also any idea of um, webinar uh, theme i mean topics uh, just let us know we can think about it we also sometimes did um private webinars uh, for, for your customers or your sales team. Uh, we do that quite often. So just let us know. It's no problem for us. OK, uh, one last word, Christoph. Uh, I'm, the, uh, there was one last question from uh, from Agnieszka, but uh, I will I will answer to, to her directly about uh, div blocks. And uh, so we don't we don't stay here to uh, we don't keep everyone too long. So. But yeah, okay. we are re I'm really happy to see how many people uh, connected. For the first time, we have so so many people, uh, lots of questions, lots of interest. So it was definitely a, a good time with all you guys. And I think uh, I hope you liked it. Um, if you have remarks how we could make it better or different, uh, send us an email. We're always uh, glad to hear uh, what you have to say about all that. OK, take care, everybody. Bye bye. Have a good, have a good day. See you soon. Bye.